fries using zucchini instead of potatoes. Hopefully they came out crunchy and comparable to the real thing. So let's get into it. So here we have the zucchinis. The first thing you're going to want to do is take them, peel them, and then get them ready to cut. So now the zucchinis are peeled, what I like to do is cut them long ways, then in half, split this in half, and then come and split that in a quarters. Now what you're going to do is just repeat that for the rest of your zucchinis. So now that our zucchinis are cut, we're going to go ahead and get on with making the dredge that they're going to go in. Um, I will say though, if you do have larger pieces, which depending on the size of your zucchinis you might, say like this piece, you can go ahead and just cut it down the middle, just make it like a skinnier fry. I don't think the, uh, the size difference will vary that much in the cooking time. So let's get on with the dredge. So what you're going to need is one fourth a cup of all purpose flour and some of this grated fake Parmesan cheese, not the real stuff, it has to be this grated stuff. And as far as seasonings go, we have some salt, garlic powder, red cayenne because I like stuff to be hot. But when making fries, you can add whatever seasons you want to it. It can be um, ranch flavored fries, it can be garlic fries, garlic Parmesan, which I guess this would kind of be like that, just spicy but the seasoning's really up to you. So, let's get to making the dredge. First, you're gonna wanna sift your flour into the bowl. You wanna sift it because you wanna make it light and able to coat the fries evenly. You don't want any chunks of flour or cheese because then, it won't coat the fries evenly and it won't be as crunchy. So next you probably want to use about about the same amount of cheese. You want to go ahead and sift that through. And then the last little bit you can rub through. What you're left with is the big pieces. Now you can discard that or you can put it on the fries at the end. It's really up to you. Now for my seasonings. I'm gonna go with some garlic powder. I like a lot of garlic. Go with some black pepper. pink sea salt and 
and then the cayenne pepper. Now, like I said, that's my seasoning, but they do have french fry seasoning. The only thing I would say about this is this is usually pretty salty, unless you get like a no sodium version. So I would be careful with this. The last thing you wanna do is make your food way too salty and make it unedible. So now that we have the fries back in the picture, here's one beaten egg with hot sauce added into it. I use frank hot sauce, cause that's what we have and that's what we like. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is pour it on the fries, or zucchini fries. And we'll take your hands, make sure they're clean, and go ahead and toss them in it. Now this is just gonna help the, uh, the dredge stick to it, or the breading, wherever you wanna say it, but it's not really bread, it's just flour and Parmesan cheese mainly. It's gonna help it stick to it, and also the egg, when it cooks, it's gonna help create like a, uh, a crispy shell around it. So now that that's mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and we're gonna to get to actually dredging them. What you're gonna to wanna to do is preheat your oven to 425 and get yourself something um, to elevate the fries off the pan. What I'm using is a cooling rack and this will prevent them from getting soggy. So let's get into dredging them. You don't wanna take it, just roll it quickly in there. You don't want too much on there, but you want enough to actually coat them. This is where sifting your Parmesan cheese and your flour really come into play. You get more of an even coat. If not, your Parmesan cheese is actually pretty clumpy. And what will happen is you'll have a lot of spots that are missed. And even if you do have any spots that are still missed, like say right here or maybe right here, it'll still be fine. The most important thing is that most of the fry is covered. i say about 80% versus non are uh, not sifting it, you probably only get about 30% covered. The reason I'm saying this is because I just tried a batch without using any flour or without sifting it and it didn't go too well. Most of the breading came off and I think, well, the Parmesan cheese came off and I think that's because I didn't um, sift it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and we'll get back to you afterwards. Now that the fries have been coated, and look, I'm not even going to lie to you, I think three zucchinis was too much for using one-fourth a cup of each parmesan and flour, so I probably only used two zucchinis for that, but that being said, they've all got coated, and also, I think letting them sit a little bit kind of draws the moisture out and into the flour, and I think that'll help it stick a little bit better. So, now that it's like this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to spray them, and, um, Get some oil on them so that they can crisp up in the oven what i'm using is it's called misto you put oil in there pump it and it's basically like a can of pam or non-stick spray or whatever but it's um it's a little bit healthier i think because it's using actual oil and it might be oil in the cans of pam or whatever i just don't know what's in there i think this might help it fry a little bit better now it doesn't spray the same as Pam. As you can see, it sprays more in a stream than in a um, in a mist. I think that's the whole issue with Pam, right? The fact that it's an aerosol or has aerosol sprays in it. I don't know. I still use it, and I think there's really nothing wrong with using it. I mean, we probably get exposed to a lot of stuff. We probably get exposed to a lot of stuff every day anyway. But it's for another channel, another time. That's just my quick view on it. So, I'm pretty sure you just heard. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll let you know as soon as they're done and we'll see how long it took. All right guys, now on to the burger recipe. I'm actually using 85, one second. 85, 15, turkey. 
and what this is going to be is a pretty simple turkey burger recipe. It's um nothing too special. It's not going to be with Worcestershire or uh, barbecue sauce in there, breadcrumbs, anything like that. It's more of a simple recipe. I just wanted to show you how to make everything. It's going to be in my thumbnail. So, like I said, it's going to be a simple recipe for turkey burger. Um, turkey doesn't have as much flavor as say beef or uh, a crab burger, shrimp burger, whatever. Even a ground chicken burger, I'm assuming you would have to season a lot also. So with my turkey burger, start off simple, just some pepper. Some garlic. Now, with all multi seasonings or um, combination seasonings, there is usually a lot of salt in there, and that's why I'm not going to put salt in the turkey. I'm using some chicken rub, and it has a good flavor, but there is a lot of salt in it. When I first got this, you can see it's pretty used. When I first got this, I actually messed up a few dishes by putting too much of it in there and making it too salty. But let me see what it has. Look, the ingredients salt is the first one monosodium, uh, glutamate, I'm guessing some other type of salt, spices, paprika, garlic, onion powder, blah blah blah. Salt's the first thing, so be careful with stuff like this. It can be very salty. So, I'm going to add a little bit of that. And go ahead and mix it. And I guess let's get to doing that. So once your turkey's mixed, I like to set it on a piece of parchment paper because I also like thin burger patties. So it would be hard to make it thin and then transfer it over to a pan. So you just put a piece of parchment paper. Eh, it'll make it square. It'll be like a Wendy's burger today. I don't know if you guys have Wendy's where you live. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's everywhere. But we have a place called Wendy's here in Texas. And I'm pretty sure it's everywhere. They make square patties. And uh, I figure it might as well I'll go ahead and just make it a square patty. So there it is. It's probably going to be way too big for my bun that I'm going to use. But oh well. So this part is simple. It's just assembling a burger. So, obviously, some mayonnaise. I do top and bottom. And then it come in with the patty. Tomatoes. Well, actually, we do lettuce. Whatever little bit is left. That's trash. Then probably tomatoes and then pickles. that so here's the final product guys you got the zucchini fries turkey burger and a spicy ranch the ranch is just a normal ranch with Frank's red hot in it and as far as the fries go because that's what this video is revolved around um, they're pretty good they do taste very good they have a slight crunch to them and they are a good substitute I will say that they're not french fries they're not Popeye's french fries McDonald's french fries but they can cure a craving, I guess. And um, I do like them, and I think you will too. You can go ahead and try it and let me know what y'all think in the comments. And remember, cooking is not a science. Baking might be a science, but cooking can be tweaked and changed to fit how you like stuff. So don't be scared to try recipes. 
So guys, that concludes my first cooking video. I hope you liked it. I hope you try it out and let me know how it came out in the comments. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike, but let me know why you didn't like it or what I can do to make it better. Also, this is my first cooking video. I do plan to make a lot more as well as different videos on my weight loss journey. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you think that's interesting to you. And we'll see you in the next one.